Hi, I'm Jessica Troop. I have recently moved to Wisconsin. I was in Colorado for a while. Before that, I was in San Francisco. I've lived in Wisconsin a little less than two years. I did all of my, almost all of my permaculture training in Colorado, and I did, um, so I've done the permaculture design course and advanced course and teacher training. I've done two teacher trainings, actually. <laughs> trying to apply permaculture principles in all different situations instead of just in the garden because permaculture is really focused on gardening and farming and so this talk started out being about how to use the kitchen and cooking to, talk, to teach permaculture. I wanted to start by just going over from a permaculture perspective what it means to design from patterns to details because this is important when creating meals and cooking and so how do we apply this principle to cooking? And I want to start with that pattern, just as an example, the meat and starch and vegetables. Even though I'm not necessarily saying you have to follow that pattern, but it's one we're familiar with, so I wanted to start there. So the pattern is meat, starch, and vegetable. And so we're go going from pattern to detail. This is the really high level. This could be anything. So let's go down one level of detail. So if we go down one level of detail, we'll say, let's choose the main ingredients. So for example, one main ingredient for the meat could be steak, okay? So when we're going down, we're just going down one level of detail. And then for a vegetable, we can use green beans, my mom's favorite. So we've got our main ingredients, so let's talk about cooking methods. So, how are you going to cook the steak? Grill. Grill? Grill? Okay. How are you going to cook the rice? Boiling the water, boiling it. <laughs> Boiled, okay. What about the green beans? Oh, what did you say? Saute. Okay, so that's the next level of detail. And let's go down one more level of detail. And we're going to choose <coughs> seasonings. And it can be seas any, anything we add for flavor. So not just spices, but any kind of seasoning. So what are we going to season the steak with? Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Anything else? Okay. With the rice, it's boiled. Um, what might you do to spice up this rice to perk it up a little bit? Put a little butter. 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 Any other ideas? Just some herbs. Herbs. Basil or something. Okay. Herbs. Butter. I'm gonna add one more thing. Let's add mushrooms. Okay. I know you really can't read that at all, but it says mushrooms. Okay. Okay. Let's 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 go with the green beans. So we're sautéing the green beans. That was your idea. So what are we going to put with the green beans? How are we going to cook it other than sautéing it? Uh, garlic. Garlic. What kind of oil are you going to use? Olive oil. Olive oil. Anything else? Onions. Onions. Okay. Okay. I'm going to throw in one more thing. How about some balsamic vinegar? Sound good? Okay. Okay. So, this exercise is just to illustrate the process of designing from patterns to details. So we got the really high level pattern here, and with each level of detail we went a little deeper. So now we don't just have meat, starch, and vegetable, we have grilled steak with salt and pepper, rice with herbs and mushrooms. This is the stuff that they put on the menu, right? Yeah. It's the whole it's the whole thing, the whole dish. So really just a high level example of designing from patterns to details. So I think a lot of our a lot of our recipes, a lot of how we cook is based on using ingredients that come from all different seasons, all different places, and we don't really separate them anymore. Like have you have you ever looked at a cookbook on 
local local food eating. Has anyone seen a cookbook that's about eating locally? They, they had one in Colorado that was by all the local food chefs that were there, and each had their own recipes. And almost every single one used olive oil. Where does olive oil come from? You know, I used to get olive oil because I, I knew I couldn't get it locally, but I still did, I didn't have a substitute for it. So I would get I would order cases of olive oil from an organic olive grove in California and have them shipped out. And you know, because I still wanted to support some local farmer, even, even if he if he wasn't local to me. But all of our recipes and the way we cook and the way we think about cooking, we've really lost sight of the seasons. So when I talk about the process of cooking, the first thing that I encourage to me, the first step is look around you and see what is growing and what is abundant and what needs harvesting right now. So instead of letting food rot on the vine or even instead of preserving it, is there something that you can eat now instead of grabbing something from the pantry or the freezer? We've got what's in our garden. We've got what's in our yard, weeds. Does anyone, is anyone into wild edibles? A little bit. Awesome. Cool. Almost all of you. That's great. So, uh, weeds, I think, are the best permaculture food because they're the least amount of effort, unless you have to put a lot of effort into harvesting them and preparing them, like acorn flour is great, but that requires a bit more effort than just going out and grabbing some chickweed to put in your salads. So